What kind of election is possible in this blasted landscape? None. Everyone who might vote has fled from here. And where we do find people, they want nothing to do with President Assad's poll. What elections, he says contemptuously. The elections of a butcher, it means nothing to us. He'd win even if no one voted for him. There won't be a single ballot box in any of the liberated areas, says another man. People remain defiant. These war widows say their loss hasn't broken their spirit. I'll sacrifice myself and my children for God, she says. This election is a mockery, says her friend. My husband and his three brothers didn't martyr themselves for people to go out and vote for Bashar. Some have been in this camp in Idlib almost since the uprising began. That was three years ago. There's bitter disbelief that President Assad has lasted that long, but we could find no one prepared to see him stay in exchange for peace. In Idlib, the alternative to President Assad is Hassan Aboud. He leads the most powerful armed group here, the Islamic Front. Theirs is a religious war, but they say Syria's minorities, Christians, Shiites and Alawites, have nothing to fear from the Islamic State they're fighting to establish. The West doesn't understand Sharia, he says. It's not just a set of punishments. Applied correctly, Sharia encompasses liberty and justice. We won't force it on people. We hope they will willingly demand it. At other times and in other parts of opposition-controlled Syria, we have come across tremendous war weariness. We haven't encountered that on this trip. The men of the Islamic Front want to get rid of President Assad, whatever the cost and however long it takes. They have many supporters here. So whether the future in Syria belongs to these men or to President Assad will be decided not at the polls but on the battlefield. Paul Wood, BBC News, Idlib.